to claim his first victory of 07. As the series heads east to Lowe's Motor Speedway, 06 NASCAR Nextel Cup champ Jimmy Johnson climbs into the Cadillac and he joins the series regulars under the lights at Lowe's Motor Speedway. Speed GT Championship action is next. Speed GT Circus has packed its tents, traveled over 2,000 miles, and is now ready for the fourth round of the championship chase. Hi, everybody. I'm Greg Kramer, joined by Dorsey Schrader here in the booth, Brian Till covering all the action down at pit lane, and welcome to Lowe's Motor Speedway. Now, Dorsey, there's certainly been a tremendous amount of promotion and publicity generated over the past few months that reigning cup champ Jimmy Johnson was going to run in a Cadillac here tonight. But the key word now is was. And for more on that, let's get right down to Brian Till. Well, that's exactly right, Greg. He was going to run, but this morning, Lawson Aschenbach, his teammate here with Cadillac, he had a problem with that very potent CTSV that he was running, so they went to the backup car. That backup car is what Jimmy Johnson was supposed to drive. Since Lawson is running for the championship and needs the points, Jimmy Johnson stepped out. Lawson Aschenbach steps in that car so his championship hunt can continue. What that means for the fans, no Jimmy Johnson here tonight. Greg? All right, thanks very much, Brian. And Dorsey, it seems, though, that there might be a little bit more to the story. I mean, it's certainly no secret. Caddy has been lobbying the SCCA for what they call competition adjustments to get that car set back to the way it was at least at the end of last year. And it certainly seems like the timing of all of this may be a little bit more than coincidental. <laughs> well, what I can tell you is the facts, and these are the facts. This morning when the practice went out, Jimmy Johnson was here. He did not, however, go out and take his practice time. And that being said, Lawson Aschenbach's car had not even fired yet. There would have been no way for Caddy like to know there was an engine problem so you fans at home uh, you draw the conclusions absolutely but we do have the normal field of tremendous drivers for GT and you just saw Casey Kane also behind the wheel and Dorsey after the busiest track on the circuit perhaps the simplest well everybody knows about Lowe's Motor Speedway mile and a half high bank but here chicanes on both sides of the racetrack now those chicanes are going to slow the cars down from 161 miles an hour to 30 the reason for the chicanes is quite simple these road race cars are not used to the high banks the heat generated on the high banks are too much for these type of tires to take so these chicanes slow the entry to the corners are still going to be a problem. I think tires are something to watch. Well, that is the reason, in fact, that we are having a rather unique format here. We are going to be driving 20 minutes of racing. Then there's going to be a yellow flag, a caution flag. All the teams have to go to pit lane. They have to change tires. They can make wholesale changes on the car, except refuel it. But there's still more to become. Yeah, at that 15-minute area, there's going to be a wheel set up down there. It's called the wheel of inversion. Somebody's going to spin that wheel, and it's going to come up with a number between 1 and 5. If it picks number 1, there's no change. But if it picks number 5, there's an inversion of the top 5 cars. So we're going to start all mixed up on that second round on the 20 laps. All right, well, we talked about who's going to be out there, and let's take a look at the field as we bring you our MagnaFlow starting grid. Front row, Michael Galati, his first pole in the Porsche. Just a tremendous five-time champion in the series. And Michael McCann in the McCann Plastics Viper actually qualified second, but during the qualifying session, spun a bearing. He has withdrawn, so that second spot will be filled, ironically, by Galati's teammate, Randy Popes in the K-Pax Racing Porsche. And then Andy Pilgrim in the number eight XM Mobile One Cadillac fills out the uh, what would have been the second row actually now starting third Lou Gelati will move up in his LG Pro long tube header Chevy Corvette then it'll be James Sofronis the Global Motorsports Group Porsche then Eric Kern who's the current points leader in the wheel and engineering Corvette Brian Kubinski in a great qualifying effort in the diamond construction Chevrolet Corvette Rob Foster in the LTI contracting uh, Viper will be qualified in the eighth spot ninth will be Casey Kane the seven-time cup winner in the kicker Woodhouse Auto Family Dodge Viper and filling out that tenth spot in the grid actually qualified Qualifying 11th in the Descalos Development and Investments Dodge Viper is Jason Descalos, the rookie out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. But some big stories outside of them. Yeah, certainly down in 16th, Doug Peterson in his Corvette, who was on pole at Sebring, third in Utah. He's starting way in the back there. Most notably, Tommy Archer had a crash before qualifying. He was not able to get the car up, so he has no time. He'll start at the back. And Tony Gaples in his Corvette had to change an engine, had a seal come loose, the oil got out of it. It didn't look good for the engine. They just changed it out. So watch the back of the field. Well, we'll be watching.
watching the back of the field, uh, certainly from some onboard cameras, and one of them is onboard Tony Gaples' car. He didn't get a time in qualifying as a result in the Kleinschmidt Lake Forest Sports Cars Corvette. He should be fun to watch, and look at this view. It will be spectacular. Then we are going to be jumping on board with the driver who qualified 13th. will be starting 12th, the number one Cadillac. Defending series champ Lawson Oshenbach, the Motorola Bose Cadillac CTSV. Then we're going to be going on board with his teammate who qualified in the third spot, Andy Pilgrim in the XM Mobile One Cadillac CTSV. Another great onboard look for you. And then we're going to jump up to the guy who will be starting second, the Capex Porsche 911 GT3 of number 22, Randy Popes. So the field starting to get ready. Going to go out for their installation laps. Remember, it will be, even on this unique track, a standing start. You're not going to want to miss it. Speed's coverage of the Speed GT Championship is brought to you by Bridgestone. For drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. Welcome back, everybody. The car is out on the sighting lap for this fourth round of the SCCA Speed GT Championship. Again, it'll be 22 laps or 20-minute segments, and that's about what it's going to run at the speeds they've been running, about 22 laps. And here you can see the back straight chicane heading into the third turn of the oval here. Uh, there is a much better look at it in Dorsey. It's going to be fun watching him get through here. 160-plus miles per hour down to about 30. You don't want to hit these big tires over here. Those red ones will tear up your race car. It looks the same on the front, too. And the field coming through the last turn and about ready to assume the grid positions. And let's get down to Brian Till. What's going on, Brian? Remember, guys, Michael McCann had that problem, spun the rod bearing in his Dodge Viper. I spoke to him, and he said, you know, we don't run a dry sump oil system. And the amount of time these cars are spinning on the banking right now, we're wondering if the bottom end of that engine isn't being robbed of oil a little bit. So keep an eye on the rest of those Dodge Vipers out there. They have the same situation on their power plant. Oiling could be an issue. Doris? Well, that's a big issue indeed because a dry sump system doesn't have any oil, no oil pan at all. It's held in a tank. And, of course, if you have a regular, it's like a streetcar, that oil's in the tank. It could be off to the side on the high bank and not near the pickup. Now, these NASCAR fans are around here right in the front straight. We've got a lot of them left. They've never seen this before, a standing start. I think mean, Casey's seen one before. Keep in mind, the World Challenge did run here in 2000, so that was the last time I've seen anything like this. And Casey is going to be very interesting to watch and see how he gets off the line here. Up front, you've got, of course, the huge torque of the Viper but those two Porsches with all that weight transfer right over those rear wheels should be interesting to see if they can make the payoff. Kathy Malik has the five-minute or the five-second board. When she drops that within five seconds, the lights will go on, and when the red lights go off, we go racing here at Lowe's Motor Speedway. There's the signal. The grid is clear. Revs coming up. Round four. Speed GT Championship action. We're underway. Great start by Galati. Got a stall way in the back. That's Courtney, teammate to Kane, having a problem. He's now underway. And it looked like uh, Lawson Aschenbach almost took to the grass to start out. A lot of bumping and grinding in that first chicane, Dorsey. That chicane is too tight for two cars really to make it through, even at 30 miles per hour. They were pushing and shoving, but everybody cleaned through. Look at Casey Kane tucked in behind the green Viper of Foster. Meanwhile, up front, 23 Galati, the Porsche with the red trim, his teammate Popes. Oh, and some smoke from the back of Lou Gelati's car. There was some contact. Yeah. I wonder if he's the, is that oh, tire up? They, oh! They've hit the big red tire. I said not to hit. Now watch. Oh. Carney, somebody crashes into it head on. That car's going to be roughed up. That's one of the Vipers. That's Descalos. The young and, rookie. And look at the debris about to come out from underneath front end. He hasn't got the radiator totally. There's two cars headed for the pits. Oh, that's all, that's Danny Freeze all over the racetrack. These Porsches are very vulnerable with their radiators, which are made of plastic, the tanks on the side. So there's tire damage in the front end. And Lou Gelati, you're right. Yeah. That smoke is from the first one turn one uh, pushing contest. And we are full course caution, not a surprise. There's debris on the track. There's cooling on the track. And for James Sofronis, a frustrating season continues. He has shown such speed. As a matter of fact, was fourth quick in the qualifying run, but they determined that he uh, went right through the chicane on that last lap to keep his speed alive. Docked him that fast lap. He's been ultra quick. But once again, Dorsey, it in, ends in tears. Well, you know, we'll take a look here and see what happens. It's this chicane. Now, this, this is damage from turn one, lap one chicane. That's Lou Gelati. He's getting down in the corner, all right. But watch now. The Porsche there clouts the tire, the big red tire. 
Now everybody's shuffling to try to get around it. The Viper, nowhere to go. Bam! Right into it. And, of course, that stacks everybody up from behind. It looked like Sonny Whelan and the Whelan Engineering vet teammate to our points leader, Eric Kern, was the one who got into the back of Sophronis, but Sophronis had already tagged the tire, hadn't he? Yeah, that's Jim for Sophronis. He, he's, he's done. They're not going to put a radiator in this in 20 laps. You know, it's got, you can see all the water on the back side of the car. A lot of damage. The door is even Same up. here. Look at the front end. You can see the big red tire mark that he hit that big tractor tire back there. That whole front end stove in. It's probably, if it hasn't taken the radiator, it's taken all the front substructure. All right, they're going to get that tire move, that big red tire back in position, but you can see all the moisture down in that area, too. Well, that's the problem. We really didn't discuss these chicanes, but when a car hits the tire and it moves the chicane out of its normal configuration, if you're in the middle of a pack of cars like that, well, you don't have a choice to see it. You just get there, and it's, it's right in your face. Brian? James? James Sofrenes has stepped out of his Porsche. James, we, you know, we talked after qualifying. You had a great run, and you were nervous about the congestion down in there. Um, problem with another car. I understand there was a tire involved, one of the big tires as well. Well, you know, it started off. We knew we were going to have a tough issue going into turn one. And uh, I, uh, you know, Lou checked up really abruptly into turn one. I got in the back of him, and then Curran got in the back of me, drove a tire or something back into my car, and then I was breaking into the chicane. Did not ha I didn't have nearly the kind of braking that I've been having all weekend, so I knew there was an issue. And uh, there's no room for error in that other chicane in the back, so unfortunately I made it, you know, a, a, a bad situation, uh, even worse. You know, Todd and Steve and the guys at GMG did a great job, and it's really unfortunate to be out of the race this early. We had a fast car, and uh, there's no question about it. So, you know, I feel bad for the guys. Uh, that's racing, so. Well, you heard him say, no room for error, but guess what, guys? There was one. No, there was, and it was painful. And by the way, I said I thought it was uh, Sonny Whelan, but it was Curran, the points leader, who apparently got into the back of James. So some issues there, perhaps, in the points chase as well. So we're going to step away for just a minute. When we come back, we'll get it all sorted out for you. Stay tuned. Back at Lowe's Motor Speedway, there's a look at the four onboard shots that you're going to be enjoying as this race unfolds. And obviously, after that quick early caution, as soon as we get back to green, which we anticipate happening very soon, we will get back to it and try and get in here our 20-minute uh, segment of racing. Now the clock has started, so the lap count is underway. So this is going to change things up a little bit, and this caution obviously going to help perhaps those tires. It doesn't change the format, and Dorsey, the lights are out on the pace car, so we expect a green coming up. Of course, the difference this time around, Greg, is it's not going to be a standing start. This is going to be a flying start. They'll get down in that brake area with probably 30 mile per hour more speed to get rid of. Hopefully they'll do a better job of it this time than when you had the, the standing start. All right, pace car making the move in, and that means it'll be Michael Galati and that red trim Porsche from K Pax Racing leading the field up. His teammate Pope's behind him, and boy, did Galati get a jump! And he already has eight, nine legs as they get to the line. That's what now, you want, yeah. too. <laughs> Caught Randy sleeping there a little bit. I mean, he got a good jump on that. Clean through the uh, LLS there, chicane, if you will. Do you think maybe they purposely laid off each other a little bit to get a run through that chicane and not bottle each other up and maybe have some contact? Yeah, it would be smarter to do that every lap because it's just such a tight little area. Cold tires again, they really don't have that much heat after one lap. Ooh, big move back from sixth. That, well, it was a look at Lawson Aschenbach, I think, trying to maybe get around. Couldn't quite get it done. Meanwhile, here we go through that chicane again. There is Gelati. Now, We're on board with Aschenbach. Right in front of him is Casey Kane. And our defending series champ makes the move under Kane. Picks up the fifth spot. That little bit of smoke you see. Wow, a lot more smoke. smoke coming I was from about Gelati. to say, we talked about tires being an issue anyway. But one rubbing on a fender when you're doing 160 on a high bank is not the best thing to have. Look Boy, at this chicane. Look how tight this is. And Lou really shallowing up, protecting his entry in there. Or so it seems. Anyway, back up now into turn two and making that big high-speed run. I will be surprised if they let Lou Gelati continue to run with that much smoke. That's just way too much tire rub on an oval. That's probably, but that's pretty bad here. It's too much load that they're under all the time. Absolutely. Ooh, oh, trouble. There, goes there you go. Straight on. And that is Gelati. Our pole center and leader has spun it. Trouble everywhere now. Look at it. There's three cars. And this is what happens in the chicane. There's not much room for all this to be taking place. Porsche gets going. There's Lou Gelati. Now, I don't know.
if he lost it. Now, we don't know that the tire went down on that yet, but certainly he didn't make that corner. Doesn't look like it. I wonder if he saw Galati spin maybe, Dorsey, and it just kind of affected him. Watch Galati coming in. Well, look, here's the trouble up front. The Porsche is already in trouble spinning. Mike Galati spins around, tags the barrier a little bit, and that catches Lou out. He's back a little bit further to the left of our picture. Lou just had got on the brakes. And maybe with that tire rub, you know, maybe that affected it somehow. But he definitely went straight on in. Here's the view from onboard Randy Popes in second. That was a mistake by Mike Galati. I mean, he just got in there too deep. Good job by Randy yeah. Popes of avoidance. Locked up the rear tires. You're on the banking, coming off the banking. It's easy to do. There's Lou Galati. Lou Gelati, sorry. Locking his front tires up and going in as a kind of a reaction to the stack up there. And now here's Lou, and that tire is still That's a holding left air, but it's all oh, and Brian More Kabinski trouble. a problem, and that looks now, like the right rear door. This could be a right rear down. I think it probably will be. Either that or he could have tagged wall. We'll take a look here. Well, maybe. It's down for sure. Now, I don't know if he got it in the wall or if he didn't. Well, lots of activity early in the going, but the result is this gentleman, Randy Popes, now in the K-Pax portion, leads the number eight. Bose Motorola Cadillac sits in second in the hands of 19, or excuse me, the 05 champ, Andy Pilgrim, and we ride on board with Andy right now, sitting in second. That's Pope's Porsche up front. And I think I just saw, maybe not, anyway, the, an interesting fact about these road racing cars on this high bank is that some of them had to go to more of a stock car setup with a lot of stagger in the car, some didn't. Primarily the Porsches, a lighter weight car, didn't have to change from the road racing setup. Now that could be because of coilover shocks and so forth, or it could be because of the lighter nature of the weight of the car. But in any event, all the bigger cars had to put, you know, change their cambers around quite a bit. Take a look here. I think that just could be a punctured right rear. I mean, we just had a lot of stuff go on. Could have run over debris. Oh, the tire looks good, but we're getting there. It is. Oh, that's, that's what happened. That's a little worse, or that that could be. <laughs> <laughs> that's more like an oil fire there. Now there's the crew taking a look at it from the Black Dog Racing team. Meanwhile, there is Pope's leading from Pilgrim and. Boy, right behind Randy. Look at this, Dorsey. You've got the 2000, uh, the 03, the 05, and the 06 champions right now running one, two, three. Cream rises to the top, I guess. And Randy Popes, who is simply a master in Porsches, is uh, doing the job up front right now. And in Galati's defense, he may be a five-time champ. Three of them came in touring cars. Two came in all-wheel drive turbo Audis. This Porsche with that engine overhanging those rear wheels. A little bit different for him at this point. Now, the bad news after a great start to the season, Brian Till continues for the point leader coming in. Well, Eric Curran won the first two races of the season. Everything looked great, but then contact at Salt Lake set you in pit lane. Same thing here today, Eric. What happened? Yeah, I mean, it's on top of the world for the first couple races, and uh, things have gone downhill since then. Salt Lake City, we had a tough break with a you know radiator failure, a little puncture in the front, and, and here it was just kind of silly. Sophronis just went in too deep on the first uh, first lap of the race and hit the chicane. I, I had nowhere to go. I just plowed into him, and you know it's the end of our day, and it's unfortunate these guys work so hard. These wheel and engineering guys in this Corvette. The car was good today. I think we had a car that could have went to the front, but um, you know disappointing. But a uh, little upset at Sophronis, and uh, I think he could have been a little more patient on the first lap. So, well, we still have six races to go. Perhaps Eric Curran could climb back in this championship guys all right thanks brian and you just saw tony gapel just basically miss that chicane on the back straight did exactly what you have to do stop lose whatever position or advantage you may have gained and then continue yeah he'd blown right through there obviously couldn't stop for the for the corner so he went straight had he just kept going he would have lost a lap we'll take a look here he'll, he'll get in the brake zone and just not be able to get the car stopped he was wise not to turn into the corner with too much speed but to just go on Bring it to a halt up here. Okay, there's a mistake made. Now, everybody goes by, he continues. That's the way you should do it without getting a penalty. I almost wonder if you didn't see that flash of headlights in his mirror, somebody making the move on him and uh, lost focus on where he needed to start slowing down and just overshot it. But he continues and did not gain the advantage, so he should be fine. And the action continues here. Randy Popes leading from the Cadillac duo of Andy Pilgrim and Lawson Aschenbach with the Porsche, Randy Popes leading away here and we're closing in on the end of our first segment of racing so we'll be right back coming soon sunday on speed don't miss the speed report go beyond the highlights and beyond the stats and get the why with the speed report sunday 7 eastern 4 pacific only on speed 
just under five minutes left in this first segment of racing. And right now, it continues to be this gentleman, the number 22 of Randy Popes, leading away as we hop on board with Randy, exiting the chicane and making his way through one of the famous bank turns here. Heading down the long back chute into yet another chicane. And Dorsey, one of the things we've seen, Tony Gaples having some problems getting the car slowed down and the like. Even though this is a pretty simple track, braking has to be an issue here. Braking is an issue here. We see one of the cars pulling down off of the, out of the chicane, something That's Ed wrong. Braswell, I believe. That's Ed Braswell 32. out of Key West, Florida. Neighbor of mine down there. Trouble for that car. Brakes are a big issue. When you're coming from 160 to 30, doing it twice a lap, you know, it's, it's going to be tough on the brakes. Now, it's cooled down. It's a nice night here in Charlotte. However, uh, you know, it was a pretty, pretty warm day. That car looks good. Yeah, Randy, it's working very well. It's still Pilgrim in second, Aschenbach in third. Now, there's no reason for Andy right now. Our, our, I'm sorry for Randy to go out there and get a big lead because we're going to stop here in a couple minutes and we're going to possibly invert his front position as far back as fifth right. possibly. This is Sonny Whelan and the team number 31 Whelan Engineering Corvette to points leader coming in current who had that problem and the 99 of Jeff Courtney who's the teammate to Casey Kane for this event in the Kenda MPI Dodge Viper from Woodhouse and these two guys going at it big time right now. Certainly at 160 plus miles an hour drafting is an issue it will definitely work. There is Kane, who right now in that Woodhouse Auto uh, family and kicker, Dodge Viper, sits in fourth spot at this point. And uh, kind of a lonely race for him right now. He's a ways behind Aschenbach, but he's clear of the guys behind him by a bit. But a smart racer knows on a format like this, there's not much to do in the first 20 laps of this race. Knowing that we're going to stop now, put tires all the way around, and in maybe invert the field. The first 20 laps doesn't mean a thing. This next 20, on the other hand, uh, will be more important. Fifth, by the way, is uh, Foster, as we're on board with Andy Pilgrim sitting in the second spot right now. And Michael Galati is on a tear, coming back up through the pack and uh, is running in sixth spot right now. And uh, Tommy Archer, who, of course, came off of that win at Utah in the most recent round just a couple of days ago, his Viper looks a little wounded on track right now. So we'll try and find out what's going on there. And then behind them is that great battle we've been following with Whelan. And Courtney, meanwhile, watching what's unfolding right here, here is Andy Pilgrim, champion in the series a couple of years ago. And uh, Luke coming up to put Lou Gelati down a lap, who's still struggling with tire woes. And maybe that tire is finally starting to give up, and he's just trying to get to this caution. Yeah, that's a very good possibility. He's running on the bottom of the racetrack, trying to stay out of everybody's way. He was involved in the lap one, turn one incident where we thought maybe tires would be an issue. It's not down because it was the left, it was the left rear that was rubbing, but. He's at a reduced speed right now, so maybe he feels something. Oh, look at that. Nice move there as Courtney got down underneath Wheel and Dorsey into the front straight chicane, made the pass, picked up the spot. You just saw the car of Archer running very slowly on the track right now relative to the others. There's Archer's car, and he came in after that win at Utah, and you can see he's struggling. Meanwhile, Galati makes a great move on the back straight chicane, ducks underneath the green Viper of Foster, and that should put Galati back into the top five. So our pole sitter after that early mistake is just cooking out there. Now, one thing, if you've got a problem with your car like Lou Gelati, if you're feeling something you don't like, it'd be best to do what he's doing there. You can see right there getting passed. Go slow to the one minute from now. We're going to get a caution. Bring your car in. Have your guys work on whatever your problem is. Try to fix it in the 10 minutes you get, and then come back out and try to win the race. There is Paul Sutter Galati coming out of the chicane. There is Doug Peterson, one of Gelati's teammates. So not a good day for the LG Motorsports equipped at this stage as Galati now up into the top five. And this caution, of course, is exactly what he needed as they get in, make the changes, and bunch the field for the restart. There is our leader, his teammate, Randy Popes. And next time by, we get the report that caution will fall. Oh, nice Big thing. power slide by Randy. He's thinking I need tires. Well, it could be need that he needs tires. And certainly Brian Till down in pit lane is going to know more about that than us very shortly he's going to have the entire field coming to him and we know that uh we know that lou gelati's got problems to look at doug peterson's got problem needs to be looked at and we don't know randy pope's right there with that big slide might also have worn the tires of the porsche at least the rear ones down now you see lou gelati to the far right of your screen he's at a crawl and uh, he's not gaining any advantage yeah, no, he's being a good guy so he, he is clear. he went through the chicane he, he just blew the chicane off right 
Hey, Dorsey, you know, you're talking about tires. You guys were talking about brakes earlier, too. One of the things I was noticing, because I'm standing right here at the start-finish line, and the double yellows are out, so we'll be stopping this session. Michael Galati is the coolest on the brakes, and I mean that temperature-wise. I don't see nearly as much brake glow down into one, so he's really taking care of that brakes. He may have the better brake package in the second half. That's a good point. And that's going to start to come into play. As Brian said, the caution is out. And that means they're going to gather the field up. And there is your leader at the caution, Randy Popes. He will lead the field down into pit lane. And all the teams will change all tires on the car. They can make any change they want on the car, correct, Dorsey, except adding fuel. They've got 10 minutes from when the last car on the racetrack passes the plane coming into pit lane where the timing starts. Now they've got 10 minutes, and they can do whatever they need to tune the car up. No fuel added. That's the only, that's the only rule. All right, so Popes will lead them around into the pits, and the crews will get their chance to shine here at Lowe's Motor Speedway. We'll be back. Speed's coverage of the Speed GT Championship is brought to you by sea -Doo. Break free and discover the exhilaration of sea -Doo. Well, folks, all the action now is down in pit lane here at Concord. Let's go to Brian. Uh, and there's been plenty of action for Randy Popes. Randy, great qualifying, but even better leading up to this half. Are you a little nervous about this wheel of inversion? Maybe that lead's going to go away. Boy, don't you know it. <laughs> I am not a Las Vegas kind of guy. And I'm sitting here with my fingers crossed that we win on that inversion number. But uh, you know what? The K-Pax 3R Racing Points is good enough. Maybe I can pass somebody. This is great fun to be here at Charlotte. And I got to say that uh, it's really great to be leading the race. First time this year. The last race I tried to lead and I didn't make it. <laughs> All right, brakes and tires, brakes and tires. Real quick, you got them for the rest of the race? Will you have the brakes? I don't know. My crew chief was telling me to take it easy on the brakes because this track really eats them up. But Porsches have always got great brakes. And the uh, Toyo tires are holding up well, but they're really challenged by the banking. So we're going to try and bring it home for K-Pax and for WeatherTech and APR and all my buddies. Well, here we go with the wheel of inversion. Randy Popes is about to find out where he'll start this next section. That's got to be a little bit of a concern. Obviously, you work so hard, Dorsey. Now, the wheel of inversion, they're down there. We're going to see it in a minute. They're going to spin this wheel. It's got numbers one through five on it. If your one comes up, nothing changes. They start like they finished. If a two comes up, the top two invert. They just change sides on the racetrack. It's going to be a side-by-side -side start. Three, of course, all three, all the way to five. If they get a five, we'll see what they do. They're getting ready. And there is the wheel that we've been talking about, and we've got, I believe, we're going to have a bit of a dignitary come up. This is CTC pole night here at Lowe's Motor Speedway, and uh, we believe we're going to have one of the guests from CTC will be coming up and spinning. You can see Lugnut down there, but uh, we're getting ready for this inversion. And, uh, ah, we've got a report that Lugnut is. Oh, that's not Lugnut. Our VIP. All right, the wheel is spun. That's one of the oh, Toyo Tire girls. Gave it a good old spin. It can make me dizzy. All right. All right. Dun, dun, dun. She could have spun dun, a little less. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, <laughs> she, she gave that a, a good wind up. All right, here we go. Five, four, three, two. two. Two front row. Front so row changes. Randy Popes gets to stay on the front row, crossing his fingers, paid off. So it'll just be the top two that invert. So basically, Andy Pilgrim is going to be in the inside of the front row, and the Cadillac leading him down. Randy will be outside of the front row. Brian? Well, Andy Pilgrim, hey, you get to start on the pole for the second part. They just ran their wheel of inversion. You ready to start from the pole? You going to win this thing? Yeah, I'm going to try, buddy. I'm going to try. going to try as best I can, man. You got the brakes? Well, that's the problem. We got brake fake pretty bad there. So I'm going to try my best to save them if I can. Well, he's going to try his best you heard to save the brakes, and that's really taking a pounding tonight, guys. As you were talking about, Dorsey, well, when these cars down from 150 for these chicanes is a lot of work. That seemed like a lot of hoopla for nothing. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, well, we'll see what happens here, but uh, it's going to be interesting on the restart. you got the V8 of the Cadillac, the flat six of the Porsche, and behind them a bunch of V10s, including that of Casey Kane. We'll see what will happen when we come back. Cam in and pit lane has co been completed. The cars have new tires, and here, just a reminder, is our onboard shots. And, of course, with the inversion, number eight, Andy Pilgrim, we're on board right now. We'll be leading him to the line. 
his uh, nemesis, if you will, is Randy Popes, who was leading at the time, but lost that spot due to that inversion. He will start on the outside. Then, number one, Lawson Aschenbach will be inside of that second row, right behind his teammate, which could be problematic for Popes if they play it right. And then back a little bit in the uh, ninth spot is the number 34 of Tony Gables, who uh, obviously had those problems trying to get the car slowed down, might be having some brake issues, and that's something we are going to be watching for. The lights are out on the pace car, and Dorsey, we're going to go green this time. Yeah, 10 minutes wasn't long to fix problems. Guys did the best they could. We're going to go green this time, Greg, side by side, row by row, and we're getting the green early, so it's going to be fast in that chicane in turn one. Let's see what happens. It'll be interesting to see if the brakes on the Porsche are better than the brakes on the Caddy, if the Caddy can play the team angle and shuffle Pope's back. Meanwhile, here we go, coming to the line. Boy, a late green, and it flies! Big fan out at the back. That was Gables going down low. And look at this move here. Aschenbach trying to keep Kane pinched, but Kane's got the line on the inside. Does he stay put? No, Kane gave it up. So it is Pilgrim, Post, Aschenbach, and Kane out of the chicane. And we right on board with Popes. Now in second spot, that is Pilgrim in front. Now cold tires. These tires, of course, have been changed. And they haven't had any time to get any temperature in them as it just went green after one lap behind the pace car. Watch for that fifth car in line, that silver and red trimmed Porsche of our pole sitter Galati. Because with fresh tires, he is the man who might well be on the move here. And we have reports that he's done a great job of saving his tires. For more on what's unfolding right now, let's get down to Brian. Hey, Galati doing a great job saving his brakes, but let's think about championship as those cars head into turn one. Three of the top five in the championship are either out or have serious problems. Eric Kern was leading when he came in. He's gone. We documented that earlier in the, in the race. Uh, Andy Pilgrim running well right now as Michael Galati, but Tommy Archer has had contact. He's well back in the order. He was second in the championship, and Lou Gelati has lost a crank in that Corvette. He was fifth in the championship, so we're going to see a very different championship points lead at the end of tonight, guys. Of course, the crankshaft is in the engine. That's a major engine failure for Lou Gelati. That's not good. The race here is getting pretty good, however. Now, Michael Galati, who's back there in fifth, has won more championships than any other driver, and without question, a very savvy guy. I would not count him out yet. No, in every race, he gets more and more acclimated to the unique properties of the rear drive, over the wheels, rear drive Porsche. And you see Pilgrim leading the field down into the front straight chicane. On the hammer, that V8 thumping as he climbs up and into turn two. Behind him is Popst. Behind what? him is Aschenbach. One thing Randy Popst has got to deal with now they didn't before is he's no longer in the lead. And mo more than likely with the, the air dump off of that Cadillac at the speeds are going over 160 miles an hour, it probably has given him some aero push to that Porsche. It's the weak link of the Porsche anyway. It's getting the front to turn. And Galati gets down underneath Kane. Kane couldn't make the chicane. Did what he needed to do. One, a nice job of avoiding the big tractor tires. Two, stopped. Gain no advantage, and it's continued, but Galati makes the pass. Yeah, pretty savvy job by Casey right there when he knew he couldn't make the corner. Gave it up, stopped, let those guys go by. He would have gone a lap down had he not done what he did here. Watch, you just, you see a little tire smoke come out. Right there, he couldn't make it, didn't turn in. Waits, now it gets going again. He actually probably waited a little longer than he needed to. Now, one thing, Dorsey, people, of course, know Casey Kane from his cup competition, but he has spent some time behind the wheel of road racing equipment. In fact, uh, our Calvin Fish has uh, done a little coaching with him in his early career. I don't know if that sparks from underneath his car or if that's reflection on lighting, but it looked almost like the left front of Casey's car was dragging the ground. Take a look here. When he's on the banking, of course, when it's pushed down the hardest. I think it is reflection. Yeah, probably is reflection. The lights here do interesting things to paint schemes and the like. Yeah. And those are pretty colorful Woodhouse colors that they put on there, too. That they are. So there's a look as we watch Tony Gables as he's trying to fight his way up. Started in the night spot and trying to work his way up. Turn your plain Jane cell phone into a souped up hot rod. Satisfy your need for speed with high octane ringtones and fuel injected wallpapers from Speed Mobile. Log on to speedtv.com now and download your favorite ringtone and wallpaper today. There's been some activity on the track. Let's get right down to Brian Till. 
Well, from the pole, Michael Galati had a great run going, but then a problem with the Cadillac. Galati has climbed out of the car and walked away. We were going to get a word with him, but obviously very, very disappointed. Looking for a win for Porsche and himself to move him up in the championship. That hope is gone. Greg? All right, thanks very much, Brian. Another and, oh, problem. Oh, that looks like Braswell. That's that Braswell. Yeah, has backed it into the tires. He spun, obviously, in the brake zone and backs in. He will continue. Oh. I think that may have been our race leader working through, but Galati was in full pursuit and trying to run down Lawson Aschenbach for third. Boy, look at that. Dejected. That's, that hurts. It was a mistake he made. He knows it. There's no excuse. I mean, that he has, there's nothing he can say. He was trying so hard to get by. Take a look what happens to Mike Galati right here in the Porsche. Watch as he comes in, the second car in your frame hits this white tire. Bam! Now look at the wheel. Breaks the left front suspension completely off. Good save not to get up in the outer wall, but the day is done. That whole left front corner. Watch again from here. Here's your tire. Bam! Just clouts it. And obviously, I mean, he had to. He was just trying to carry speed through the chicane to be able to stay with that V8. Well, he got out. that little slide right yeah. in the middle. He got a little oversteer in the middle of the chicane. That took away his room to turn left, and he just got right into that heavy old, you know, earth-moving tire or whatever. There's Michael. He's okay, obviously. Just dejected, mad at himself. Just frustrated, obviously, not happy with how it unfolded. Meanwhile, we saw Ed Braswell backed into the tires, and here's how that uh, unfolded, Doris. This will be a braking issue. You see Ed in the yellow and blue car. Just gets in too deep, locks the rears, the ground comes the Corvette. He's going to back in, a much safer way of hitting these tires. <laughs> Knocks that one out of the way. Well, just the one. You couldn't have done that if you'd planned. Now, these are huge tires. It's not the best thing in the world for a chicane, you know. I'm not an advocate of chicanes to begin with, but like I say, we're dealing with an issue of being on a bank track with with a, a tire issue, it's not the tire manufacturer's fault. It's a, these aren't meant to be running around on. Exactly, exactly. I bank ovals. Out of their element, I think, is the way to put it. But a but there's experiment. A, but there's a better way to do this. You know, there's a much better way of uh, constructing a chicane. That I would deem dangerous. Right. It's just too much to hit. Well, for Andy Pilgrim, who was very concerned, you heard the interview we did with Brian Till. Uh, Brian was talking about the brakes. Any updates? Exactly, Greg. I checked, and the two top teams have two different concerns. Brakes on Cadillac. I'm watching Andy Pilgrim now, breaking about 40 yards before the start-finish line. Randy Pope's right on the start-finish line. The brakes on the Porsche, much better. What is not good are the rear tires on the Porsche. With the engine in the back, really wearing that right rear tire. The Porsche guys trying to save tires. Caddy trying to save brakes. Brian, when you see the Cadillac going into one, you really see that front brake rotor. It doesn't look like he's got that much rear going, but boy, they are screaming red hot when they get into the brake zone. Once again, this car carries a fair amount of additional weight as you see it. Oh, yeah. A lot of weight this car is mandated by the series to carry, and as a result, on this kind of a track, you're accelerating that weight, and then you're slowing that weight down, and it certainly takes its toll. And uh, Randy Popes, meanwhile, trying to hold on to those rear tires, and we're closing in on the end of this one. We'll be right back to take you to the finish. We are back. You are riding on board Randy Popes, the number 22 K-Pax Porsche, sitting in the second spot. But, Dorsey, the problem for Randy is you don't really see a whole lot of Andy Pilgrim large in his front window, do you? No, you don't. You know what's going on right now? The Porsches have used up their rear tire. The rear tires are gone. They're not getting any grip. And the Cadillac has used up its brakes, the front brakes in particular on the Cadillac, glowing really, really hot. Andy Pilgrim having to slow the car down considerably earlier every lap, and we're running out of laps with about three to go. Oh, and Aschenbach has gone around Pope, so all that lateral grip apparently is gone that you need on the banking, and brakes and all, the Caddy's able to go one, two. Now, Aschenbach hasn't been complaining so much, I don't believe. All right, Brian? Guys, I just checked in with Will Moody, who calls the shot for Randy Popes. He said, indeed, the right rear is done. It takes such a pounding around this racetrack. What Andy Pilgrim has been able to do, Dorsey, you know, you've done a lot of endurance racing. He can brake longer and lighter on the brakes, save those brakes a little bit better than that Porsche can save that right rear with all that engine weight on it and these long turns on the banking. It's just been grinding off that right rear tire. He'll tighten up his front sway bar, make the front end not turn so well, and loosen up the back. He's probably already done that all the way, obviously. And uh, right now, just be holding on, just braking like you say, Brian, early and light, and just don't load the car up so much. But the banking here, he's going to have to be very careful on. Now, the one thing for Randy in his favor is they those lead three cars had opened up a pretty substantial margin over Rob Foster, having a potential career best day here, running in fourth right now, hanging on in front over the 99 Viper of Courtney, and then the number nine Viper in fifth of Casey Kane. 
So it is just that close, but for Randy, a fair amount of distance between he and Foster back and forth, so he might be able to hang on and salvage this, and right now our leader working some pretty thick traffic, but Andy pretty savvy in traffic and uh, gets the gap and lets it go. Well, they're all kind of in a survival mode, taking care of the weak link of their car, the Cadillac taking care of its brakes. He'll be braking light and early as much as he can possibly. Run the corners hard if he's still got good grip. The Porsche won't run the corners quite so hard. It'll take advantage of the brakes it does have. See all the cars starting to slide around a little bit as they get through the chicane. There's the green, that is the green Viper of Foster doing Boy. a great job running in the fourth spot. Behind right. him is the 99 of Courtney, that's fifth. And that's a good battle on the racetrack because actually there's a car right behind Courtney as well. All three of these guys battling over that position. Yeah, that's Courtney's teammate Kane in the sixth spot. So meanwhile, here comes Pilgrim and we believe white flag the next time he comes by start finish on the last lap, halfway between three and four and heading into the dog leg. Andy Pilgrim, the caddy. Oh, Andy, one of my old teammates will be happy to see that old white flag waving with one to go. He goes by. And just now, we're seeing his teammate, Aschenbach, come by start finish. So there's the margin in terms of time, folks, that Andy has built up. And when it, you know, in a situation like this where it comes down to experience and holding a car underneath you that's fading, that a lot of all this uh, endurance racing experience, I gotta believe paying off huge. Well, the, the different thing too is that the, you know, if you have a brake problem, you can start braking lighter and the brakes will come back to you a little bit. When you have a right rear tire that's gone, that may be gone, it's not coming right. back. All right, here we go. Last time through turn three, heading toward turn four, Andy Pilgrim. The champion two years ago got a win last year and now going to pick up his first of the season. Pilgrim has done it. A great ride for Andy Pilgrim picking up first win of the season. Meanwhile, watching Lawson Aschenbach down through the dog leg. There he is on the inside of the vet. And he picks up second spot at Caddy 1 2. Wonder what if Jimmy Johnson would have done. <laughs> All right, had he been given the shot? What do you think, one, two, three, I'm <laughs> guessing. <laughs> Very possible. Third across the line is Randy Popes. So that's going to play large in the points championship. Foster, a great run to fourth in the 99 of Courtney, rounding out the top five. Cup driver Casey Kane, unofficially right now in the sixth spot. When we come back, we'll chat with the drivers that finished up front, so don't go anywhere. Coming up. Speed's coverage of the Speed GT Championship is brought to you by MagnaFlow Performance Exhaust. A hot rod isn't a hot rod until it sounds like one. And by Sea Do. Break free and discover the exhilaration of Sea Do. Moments ago, Andy Pilgrim celebrating the win here at Lowe's Motor Speedway in front of the fans. They went nuts as he lit it up and then made his way into victory circle, crawling out of the car, and he is with Brian Till. Andy Pilgrim takes win number two for Cadillac. Ron Fellows did it at Long Beach and now here at Lowe's Motor Speedway. Andy, you guys came into this race going, I'm not sure we've got the car for it. You end up one, two. You worried about those competition adjustments now? I hope not. I, we, we're not worried about it. We just have to run as hard as we can run, and that Cadillac ran hard. My foot is on fire. I was having to hit the brakes so hard. I really thought Randy was going to be on me that second race, so I pushed as hard as I could and just burned the brakes up. By the time I'd really burned him up, Randy was basically dropping back himself, said he had tire problems. So what can I tell you? Run hard, and sometimes you win them. But, I mean, a lot of the guys normally up front seem to be having problems, so we'll take it any which way we can. The CTS ran great today. Congratulations. Great drive. Thanks, man. All right, and as a result, there is a one-two sweep of the front by Cadillac. Third was Pope's fourth. Again, a great drive by Rob Foster. Fifth, the number 99 of Courtney, his teammate and cup star Casey Kane. Last car in the lead lap in sixth. Dorsey is outside of that group where we find some of the big stories. In 11th, Tommy Archer. In 16th, Lou Gelati. In 20th, points leader coming in, Eric Kern. This point scenario is just going to be totally jumbled up. Yeah, you know, looking coming into the fourth round, it looked like it was going to be a one-sided affair. Eric Kern going out there, winning the first two times and so forth. It looked like the pattern was set, but here we come to Lowe's, and all sorts of things shake out funny. All the guys who 
pull up front, have trouble, or most of them did, and now we got it going really tight when we go to Watkins Glen next. I was going to say, next uh, race, Watkins Glen, one of the legendary tracks. These guys always put on a spectacular show there. Yeah, that's a great racetrack for these cars. They'll be more at home there than obviously they were here. This was more or less an experiment on the high bank, and they learned a lot from it. We'll see where it goes from here. Absolutely. It was a great experiment, a lot of fun, and certainly an entertaining race, and we're glad you could join us here for this one. Again, next round coming up at Watkins Glen, and I want to make sure and watch this championship as it unfolds for the rest of the season. It should be very good indeed for Darcy Schrader and for Brian Till. I'm Greg Kramer. Sure appreciate you joining us here. Again, tune in for Watkins Glen and to Andy Pilgrim, one of the class acts in racing. Congratulations, bud. Nicely done.